what's commonly known now as the everything bubble, which uh, we've seen basically burst first in stocks and then bonds and then cryptocurrency. It has one more market where there's been obviously as much of a bubble as anywhere else, and that's in the real estate market, both in Canada and the U.S. And both in Canada and the U.S., I believe that bubble is, is starting to burst. And the, the difficulty with that is, is that w once it does, and if we're correct that it does, and it joins the other markets at substantially lower levels, the thing that yet has hit the markets in general, and I'm talking general financial markets, is the wealth effect impact of all of this. And so while the recession is likely to come and damper or lessen inflation than where it may be, even though I believe inflation is a lot higher than what the government reports, the negative wealth effect will become the overriding factor and keep markets on the defensive. So, uh, yes, I would say to you, we're seeing the end of the big bubble in real estate. Uh, I think it's the, the one that we're going to see uh, the most down over this quarter versus the other markets. And when that happens, I think it's going to be quite difficult for the average investor to feel really good about anything. And I think we'll all see more defensive markets. And that's why, <clears throat> excuse me, Dave, I don't think the stock market has another crash in it, but I think it's going to chop and grind lower into 2023. And uh, that's why I wouldn't yet want to own general equities at this point. Well, I don't follow Canadian markets much, so I can't really answer. But mm -hmm. here in the U.S., uh, a lot of the money uh, that has really pushed home prices, and that's what individuals care mostly about. We can talk also about the commercial side of things, but has been from actually investors uh, have been buying up uh, houses, not so much that people just needed another house. And like anything else, when there's more demand, stocks go up. When there was more demand, those homes are going up. But now, if we're correct and there's not going to be that demand, uh, some of these investors are going to start to see some, some fairly decent losses. And whether or not they'll be able to withstand that uh, will be the question. Now, we also see here in the U.S. money that has gone into real estate investments trust because people chase dividend yield during the, the insanity of the Federal Reserve going to zero interest rates. I don't know how badly that's going to be hit. I think more people, as long as the dividends aren't too uh, cut that much, most people will hold them. And that's why I don't think the commercial market will be hit as hit hard as the individual housing market. So I, I would say that housing is likely to go more down percentage than commercial real estate because commercial real estate has already kind of been in a little bear market because of the pandemic and the uh, office space and things like that ha have not recovered and not likely to recover anytime soon. You know, it's not how much it goes down. It's the fact that things are just not going to keep going up to what people have been used to. We've been living in a, in a very false premise with substantial returns that just don't make, according to the old economics 101 books and us old relics that still read them, uh, you can't keep having gains substantial as we did and, and, and keep on going forever. And the only thing I learned in almost 40 years is we tend as human beings in everything go extreme one side or another. So if we reach the peak on one end, we're not going to go back to the middle. We're going to have to swing to the other side. It's like a chart that I sent you about sentiment and so forth and so on. Right. We were at Euphoria. At best, the market came back to panic. Things like mining shares and junior resources are stuck at despondency and depression, and you have to go through those swings. And of course, when they're at the extremes, it's so difficult to sell when it's a fury. And when they're at the extremes, when everybody is bearish, it's so hard to buy them. But, but those are the points normally that have to be reached. The real movement in home prices here hasn't been the individual speculating. It's been investment groups, yeah. large institutions and all have been major buyers of homes here in the U.S. And again, I don't follow the Canadian market, so I can't mm -hmm. I can't address that. But like anything else, they, they're investors that many times can't withstand losses. And uh, th that that's the other factor. And, and if we get back to general equities, there's another important fact that hasn't hit there yet that I, I would address, too. So I would just say on your real estate end, uh, that's the first bubble that's just starting to burst now. It was the last one that was needed. And uh, I think then what we'll be talking about, if we if the good Lord allows me to speak with you again later this fall, winter or early next year, is now what will be people caught up in the wealth effect that 
people have really slowed down because of recession that hit, everything they own is down, and it isn't rebounding like it always used to. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.